So Joel, why have we actually created these presets? Uh, I was annoyed by having to, you know, create presets from scratch all the time. We wanted to start saving time in the future and decided to share the resulting presets with the editing community. We are super excited to introduce Essential Motion, a set of presets for digital zoom and post-production motion we worked on during the past few weeks. Okay, since it was your idea, do you want to talk about it? Sure. Uh, we made sure that they are uh, customizable, versatile, easy to use, and that they render quickly. And we really wanted to keep it simple. You know, these are not trendy effects that come and go, and I know that they will be as relevant now as they will be in 10 years. That's true. In a way, essential motion is nothing fancy. Like most of these presets will give you super simple motion. But I really believe these are timeless. Exactly. Hence the name Essential Motion, fitting with Adobe's essential theme, you know, like essential sound, essential graphics. Yeah, and now we have Essential Motion. That's a good point. Uh, and man, I really like how you came up with the perfect speed for the preset we call Movie Zoom In. I'll let you tell the story in a moment. We hand it to you completely for free. All you need to do is sign up for what I call my insider list. Sometimes I will provide useful editing tips, inspirations, or even coupon codes for products that I use. So once you will confirm your email, we'll message you Essential Motion automatically. This video is all about how to use these presets to unleash their full potential. Even though the presets are that simple to use, you just drag and drop, I want to make sure that you understand all of the possibilities that are at your hand. You install the presets by right-clicking on the hamburger menu in the effects panel and choosing import presets. You browse the file and the essential motion folder should appear. We only used Premiere Pro built-in GPU accelerated effects because stability and speed are our priorities. For any scaling we used transform effect. Most people just use scale in the internal motion effect. Yet using transform instead gives us a few enormous advantages. First, the presets are resolution independent. You can drop them on 17x9 4K footage, 16x9 1080p footage, square ratio clips, vertical ones, etc. Not possible if you use the built-in motion effects. Secondly, in my opinion, most importantly, you can apply these presets to adjustment layers. This way the essential motion presets will be applied to all clips below it. For example, if you want to apply a simple zoom to a shot composited with some graphic elements, you can simply drop adjustment layer above the clips and apply the preset. Where without that possibility you would have to nest the clips to apply the scaling or add and tweak the effect on each clip. What's another benefit of using these presets with adjustment layers? You can copy them as simply as alt dragging, applying to another set of clips. For our first example, we will use the preset number two, that is zoom out effect. Here I have a sequence of clips where I used jump cuts to compress the time. I got that clip from my friend Dan Raika, a great cinematographer from Melbourne, Australia. Step number one, I create and add an adjustment layer on top of the sequence of clips. Step number two, I drag and drop preset number two, zoom out effect. Step number three, there is no number three, we're done. If you hover over the name of any preset, a description will show up. Basically, it provides you with specific information about what you can expect from the preset and anchor type information. What is anchor type, you might ask? Well, it's quite important that you fully understand the implications, so let's dive in. When you apply effects to a clip and want to create a preset from them, you select the effects and right-click to choose the Save Preset option. In the dialog box, we have three options for anchor type. The default one is Scale, which we hardly used for essential motion. Here is why. Scale means that the preset keyframes will be scaled to the duration of the clip you apply the preset to. So if the clip is 5 times shorter than the original clip that was used to create a preset, the motion will be 5 times as fast. Or if the clip is twice as long, the animation will be half speed. Also, if you make the clip longer after you apply the preset, there will be no scaling at all after that previous out point. Basically, you will have to delete the preset effects and apply them again. In most cases, we want the speed of animated parameters to be constant. That's what anchor to in point and out point are for. If we choose anchor to in point, 
Premiere will always place the first keyframe at the beginning of the clip with unchanged speed regardless of the clip's duration. So with that information in mind, we can always change the duration of the adjustment layer if we do it from the right side. For anchor to in point, we move the tail of the clip and for out point, the head of a clip. Let's say that I have decided to make one of the clips longer, which means that the adjustment layer will have to be stretched. How do I do it? When I hover over the preset number two, I can see that this is an out point anchor type preset. So as we've just said, we need to edit the head of the clip. So I just move it and stretch from the left side and I'm done. Try to replicate this process in a different way. Even with nesting, this would still take you more time. For our second example, we have a clip with graphics on top. It would be quite tedious to apply zooming effect to all elements on the timeline. Again, I will place adjustment layer on top and this time we will use dynamic zoom preset number seven we get nice, very smooth dynamic zoom. This effect works great whenever you want to put more focus on something. I even used it for talking headshots and interviews to add importance to a sentence someone is about to say. This is in point anchor type preset, so to control when it's being applied, you just need to move the adjustment layer to the left or to the right. The beginning of the layer can be in the middle of the shot, but the end needs to be extended to the next cut point. As I've mentioned, this preset belongs to dynamic zoom category. I will let Joel explain what other categories we have. So we can distinguish between simple zooms, dynamic zooms, fake camera motion, and a dynamic transition. Yeah, fake camera motion category is a good one. I have to credit Standard Film Team, whose video about fake camera movements actually inspired me to start working on this pack. We used his ideas and modified them slightly for two presets fake zoom and fake tilt. They replicate what actual camera motion looks like by modifying the 3D space. It still fools me up to this point. Right, Joel, you are the one who came up with the perfect speed for the movie zooming effect. Tell me again, what was the process behind the perfect value of 6.07% for 10 seconds? Yeah, I thought it might be interesting to look at some of my favorite movie scenes and see how fast the camera zooms in in certain moments. Yeah. So I replicated those zooms inside Premiere to get a pretty accurate idea of how fast they actually were. And I thought I could calculate the average value. Great idea. But then I realized the average wouldn't match any of the shots I was looking at. So I just ended up using the value from an emotional scene from uh, Leon. Oh. So you didn't actually use any average or something? Oh, I just used the one value from, you know. Okay, I, I mean, it's the thought that counts. Yeah. The presets work pretty well for still pictures as well. This time I will apply a preset straight to the three pictures I have on the timeline. This way they always start as wide as possible. I will use the preset number 13. Again, when we hover over the preset, we can see that this is yet another in-point anchor type, so if I decided to make any of these longer, I would have to edit the tail of the clip. For our fourth example, we'll apply zoom in center preset, which works incredibly well for screen capture clips. I use it over and over again in tutorial videos. So I drop the adjustment layer in the timeline. I want to zoom in in the view in this moment, so this is where the adjustment layer clip will start. We drop the preset and we're done. But what if we need a different magnification or we want to zoom in to a different place on the screen? To edit this effect, I will select the adjustment layer and I place the time indicator on the second keyframe. Here I can edit the scale value. To edit the focus point, however, we have to edit not only position but anchor point as well. Let's say I want to zoom to the upper right corner of the screen. It's 1080p sequence, so I will set anchor point values to 19, 20 and 0 and we need to input the same values for position. Here is what we get. If you need a cheat sheet for different corners, here it is. You can also edit these values to zoom in to any point in between. Just remember that the position and anchor point parameters need to match. The last clip we're gonna use was sent to me by Michael Henry, one of my Patreon supporters. Huge thanks, Michael. 
For this slow-mo yet dynamic clip we will use presets from the last category. Generally they shouldn't be used together on one clip, but they should work pretty well as dynamic transitions between the shots. I will drop number 14 on this clip, which will apply dynamic zoom at the end of the clip and number 15 to this clip, which will add zoom out to the beginning of this clip. Here is what we get. Do not wait around, go to the link in the description, download your copy and use it in your next project. We love them and truly believe that you will find them useful as well, but we want to make them even better in the future, so any feedback is welcome. It was Peter and Joel, until the next time shoot and edit like you own Essential Motion.